By the time I did the hood and that whole side, half this top and there, I was like, I've already done a whole car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Today's cars. I mean, there's a lot of cars, but. Welcome back to Fabitum of Detailing. In this video, you guys, we have a 1964 Chevrolet Impala. I have been given the job of making this thing pop again. Let's see what we can do with it. Let's do it. All right, you guys, so the very first full detailing video I put on YouTube, which was actually a three-part series, was a 1976 Chevrolet Corvette. Uh, that gentleman referred this guy to me. Um, I will put a link up here somewhere if you wanna go check that video out. Uh, it's not the greatest, you guys. It was my very first full detailing video I put on YouTube. So it just if you watch it, just remember, it's, it's one of my very first videos. Uh, and when I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this car here, the previous owner had passed away. Um, the car sat for a long time, uh, got dusty, got real dusty. And the guy that, that bought it, he has not really done anything to it, has not washed it or anything like that. Uh, so I've got it in the condition it was when the previous owner had it and it sat. So it's got a lot of swirls in the paint. Um, I can't tell if there's oxidation. I don't think there is, but this green color is hard to tell. Plus it's dusty, it's, it's dirty. So it's hard, to, it's hard to tell. But I do not treat these older cars the way I do today's cars. I don't trust the window seals on these cars like I do today, so I'm not foaming it, I'm not using a pressure washer, I'm not even using a hose in a bucket. I am just doing a rinseless wash on this, and then we're going to go straight into uh, paint correction, you know, clean paint correction, uh, the whole nine yards from there, and try to make this paint look amazing. My job is to bring this paint back to life, make it as glossy and as just eye-catching as I can, which I think we're going to be able to make look amazing, I'm hoping, um, and just make this guy love this car, love this paint. Um, that's, that's my whole goal in this detail, you guys, and I cannot wait to do it. So let me show you guys what it looks like before. Outside, it was windy, so I'll do a voiceover, um, and then we're gonna get right into the video. Once again, it's not gonna be your normal wash, so just remember that when you wash the wash process. All right, guys, here she is. She's an absolute beauty. Uh, the color green, believe it or not, is not a GM color. That is a Toyota color green. Uh, just FYI, in case you're saying, man, I've never seen one painted that color. That's because it's not a factory GM paint job. Uh, the car really was in really good shape other than a lot of swirls, which you're getting ready to see. Um, it has not been washed in, I don't remember how many years he said it was, but it was years uh, that it sat after the owner died and it just sat and collected dust and everything else. So as you can see, tons and tons of swirls. Um, that was my main concern in this whole entire detail was removing as many swirls as I could because swirls hide gloss as most of you probably already know. The white top, once again, it's got swirls in it. The white top was thin and I will tell you that I did use my paint thickness gauge. I did not make a video on doing that. I actually did it when the customer was at the house because I wanted to show them the thickness of the paint all the way around the car. Um, the fenders, the front fenders were pretty thin. The top was thin. Um, I found other spots around the car. I did find some mud in it, which is not a big deal. It looked really good. You, can, you wouldn't even be able to tell just looking at it unless you really knew what you're looking for. Um, but this car is just a cool, cool car. It really is an American classic that people love these 64 Impalas. They're just a cool body style. And with the Krager wheels and everything on, it kind of just sets it off. So I was real excited uh, when he came to me and wanted me to detail this car for him. Uh, the cars like this, I really enjoy. It's a lot of real estate. But when the job is done and the customer sees it, it's always worth the effort that you put into it. Unfortunately, on the day he picked it up, it was completely overcast and I don't have video like this to show you in the sun when it was done. So let's get this video going. So we're gonna start off where I like to start off, the wheel wells, the wheels, the tires. I like to get those areas clean and dressed up first. Uh, I'm UNZ super clean, cleaner and degreaser on the wheel wells. I just spray it on, I let it dwell and then I go in and I'm going to hit it with a scrub brush and then I'm just gonna rinse it down.
So the wheels and tires were in good shape. I decided to go with Extreme Solutions, the Juice all-in-one wheel and tire cleaner. It's a very safe wheel and tire cleaner, but a very effective wheel and tire cleaner. It cleans tires extremely well. It works good out of a spray bottle, but as you can tell, it works awesome in an IK foamer. It gives you tons of foam, and I always go overboard with foam, as you guys know. I really like using a stiff bristled carpet brush on tire sidewalls. It's very effective at cleaning sidewalls. Uh, and, this, and with this uh, cleaner combination, it works extremely well. And then out here I go in, I clean the lug nuts and the center cap with a soft bristle brush. And then from there, I use this Adams Polishes wheel cleaning mitt. It's like a glove that goes on your hand with fingers. You can get in there and you can massage the wheels. Like I said, these wheels aren't hammered. Um, it just needed just a good little cleaning. And it's a very safe mitt. It's like a chenille wash mitt. After rinsing, I like to apply a protection to the wheels, so I use McKee's 37 SiO2 Hydro Blue. Uh, spray it on, rinse it off, it leaves a nice SiO2 protection on the wheels. I'm showing you the bottle right there, and it makes drying an absolute breeze. So what I'm using is Optimum's No Rinse O&R, as most of you know it is called, uh, in the spray bottle. And I also have a five gallon bucket next to me with a dilution ratio of half an ounce per gallon. Um, I have a bunch of rags in it and no rag ever goes back into the bucket. And then I wipe down the sides as I'll show you the dirt right here. And then I never hit with that side again, fold the towel over and I use the clean side and then I'll flip it inside out and just keep going like that as I wash the car. And then as all sides are covered with dirt the towel will not go back into the wash bucket I put it into a wash bucket a separate wash bucket that has my PNS rags to riches in it and I just let it soak there until I can get it into the laundry but as you can see um, there's quite a bit of dust and dirt on the car and I'm not going to show the full wash process because I didn't really record a lot of it because I just didn't have time the car is so big I knew I needed a lot of time to get stuff done and when you're recording and it just makes the job you're doing twice as long. Uh, but as you can see, that's the dirty side. And then now here is the clean side and we can really see what the imperfections look like. So this paint was really rough. It had a lot of embedding contaminants. Uh, so I chose to go with Greer's Garage Speed Shine with their synthetic clay mitt. And as you can hear here, it was hammered with uh, contaminants in the paint. Now, I decided to go with the clay mitt versus traditional clay because, as you guys know, I really like using traditional clay, but the panels are so big on this, it would have taken me a lot longer to do it than it does on today's cars, so I decided to go with the synthetic clay mitt. The clay mitt did exactly what it was supposed to do. When I got done, the paint was very, very smooth. Every single panel that I went over with this clay mitt sounded like that. It sounded like sandpaper, you guys. A lot of contamination in this paint, but that is expected on a car that has not been washed or taken care of in years. All right, so the wash process and decontamination is done. We can now see what we're looking at as far as paint correction. But man, we brought some gloss back just by washing it and the decontamination process because it was pretty heavily contaminated. But look at the gloss we've brought back now. I had my daughter put the Ziploc bag on, my little daughter, eight-year-old, and she felt the before and after, and she was like, oh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Check that out, you guys. It looks amazing. But we have a lot of work ahead of us tomorrow. So during the wash process, you guys, I did notice on the white top, this yellow spot right there, that kind of bothers me. And that exact same spot, it almost looks like rust coming through. I'm not sure, though. It's also right here. And then it goes all the way down. 
Well, hopefully the camera picks it up. I know you can see that one. And then the more and more I was looking at the roof, the paint looks really thin up here. So we will see, you know, he, he showed me that he touched up a few spots. He's not worried about what that's gonna look like, as you can see. So you guys are gonna see those in the ending scene and stuff, so. So after letting the car sit all night long to dry, it is time to go after these swirls and make this paint look as glossy as possible. I'm using 3D1, well, I'm a Boss G21 and a Eurofiber pad. I'll be honest with you guys, uh, 3D1, I have a love-hate relationship with that product. Some days I use it and it works great. Some days I use it and it doesn't work very well or it's hard to wipe off. I think humidity and temperature have a big factor with this, with this product, but on this day, it worked flawlessly. I loved it. It just worked so good. Um, went in going over it, uh, I applied moderate pressure, moderate arm speeds. I am not the slowest polisher there is um, when, I'm at, when I'm out there doing paint corrections. But as long as I get the results I'm looking for, I ain't worried about my hand speeds. I know a lot of people always tell me I'm too fast, but if I'm getting these type of results you're getting ready to see, the hand speeds are just fine. So on this side of the hood, I want to showcase a different type of light. This is a Ryobi One Plus 18 volt tripod light. Absolutely love it, you guys. It works really good on paint corrections, but I wanted to be able to show you guys a different type of light on this hood, on this side, because the light I showed you a minute ago was an Astro Pneumatic color match light. It's made for paint. This light isn't, but it's going to show you the defects and how well that removed them. So look at these results from 3D1. Look at that, the metallic, it looks glossy. It almost looks wet. The 3D1 and Eurofiber pad is a fantastic combination on this paint. And as you can see, that light's doing a great job to show you the defect removal. So this is the hardest position for me to be in is down here on the floor being a mechanic. I'm so glad I'll be tur done turning wrenches very, very soon. Stuff like this is not good on my body. Uh, but this is the best way I've found to polish lower rocker panels and lower portions of doors. Um, I just use fast hand speeds and get it done as soon as I possibly can. But as you can see, the defect removal was great. Um, that light showing you exactly uh, what was able to be done on this portion of the paint, even with fast hand speeds. Now let me go ahead and show you guys what this light looks like. There's the Ryobi light, and it I love it that you can bend it down like that. It is so helpful on these lower panels. So for the second stage of the paint crash, we're using Griot's Garage's Boss Perfecting Cream and the Griot's Garage G9. Uh, nine millimeter throw polisher. You want a shorter throw on a finishing polish. Uh, this is a fantastic at refining the paint, bringing out as much gloss as possible. Um, and it's very easy on, very easy to wipe off, no dusting. And you can get through the second stage pretty quick with this product. So after the paint correction, we want to go in and we want to spray a body prep on it. This is Optimus Paint Prep. It's going to remove any waxes. Uh, polishes I may have missed, anything that may be left over on the surface, I'm going to gently wipe, go in and wipe it in, and then go over with a dry towel after that to kind of buff it off. And that's going to remove anything that's left over that I may have missed, because trust me, you're going to miss things. And that's what the fantastic thing about this product is it makes it very, very easy, and it's perfectly safe for your clear coat. So for the protection stage, we're going to use Griot's Garage Liquid Gloss Polywax with the Ryobi Cordless Polisher and a waxing pad from Griot's Garage. Uh, great, great wax, you guys. I can't speak highly enough about this product. It is a man-made sealant. Um, it goes on really easy and it wipes off so simple. I do the entire car and then I come back around and I wipe it off and wipe off couldn't be easier with this product. And being that this isn't a daily driver, this should give him a good years, if not a little bit longer worth of protection. And as you can see, wipe off as a breeze. And look at that gloss, look at that light. It just looks amazing. So after I got done with the liquid gloss polywax, I let it sit for over 12 hours. It was overnight and it was time for the icing on the cake. Best of show wax. This is a liquid carnival wax from Griot's Garage. That's gonna give tons of gloss, not a lot of protection. It's one to three months, that's it but it's gonna give a lot of gloss, especially on top of polywax. It is just a great, great one-two combination if you wanna wax your car and then you wanna get that pop before a car show or something like that.
Wipe off is just as easy with Best of Show Wax as is with the liquid gloss poly wax. You can do the entire car and come back and wipe it off. You can let it sit overnight if you want to um, and come back and wipe it off. It'll be just as easy as it is right here as you see. Really, really simple. All right, so on to the last step of this uh, detail, and we're gonna use Adam's Tire Shine. It's a very low gloss satin finish, dries to the touch within just a few minutes. I love this tire shine, it's really, really good. Uh, makes the tires just look new, nice, and just a little, little bit of gloss to it. All right, you guys, so I am completely finished with this car. I am absolutely blown away by it. It looks so amazing. It did a complete 180. Uh, from what it looked like when it got here. I'm ho hoping that the customer allowed me to do a reaction video so you guys can see his reaction to this because I think he's going to be blown away just like I am, you guys. I am wore out. Um, I've got about 20 hours in this car this weekend, and I'm just tired. Uh, it was definitely well worth it for sure, um, but it was a lot of work, a lot of work. And this paint, you know, it was soft in spots. It was hard in spots. It was kind of medium in spots. It was thin in spots. It was thick in spots. So, I, I, you don't really know on a car like this, especially a car that's an aftermarket spray job, not, not factory, I guess I should say, um, what you're looking at. So you treat each and every panel differently, which I did. You know, some panels I put pressure down on, some panels I really put no pressure down on. So yeah, you're going to see leftovers. There's, I got, I'm in the neighborhood of 90 to 93, I think, right around their percent of, of defect removal, which is really good. Um, and I'm not trying to go any further than that. I always try to preserve clear coat, you guys, because that is the majority of your UV protection. I'm going to do a before and after shots in the garage, and then hopefully a reaction video at the end to see what the customer thought of it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I absolutely had a blast making it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button right down here somewhere, and then make sure you ring that bell so every time I upload a video, you get notified. We'll see you in the next video.
different. Huge difference. It's a different color almost because the the way the swirls it's, do what? Because it's clean. Yes, yeah, clean. Well, no, the swirls high gloss. Right. Big time. Now you're still gonna see some here and there. Yeah, my stupid little touch up. <laughs> oh yeah. The top turned out great. Yeah. Now that the top was real thin right in here so i was just real careful with it i was real careful around the whole thing because i just don't know the clear coat right obviously so you just have to be really careful now you feel it with the back of your finger because it felt like sandpaper when it got here feel it with the back of your finger. <laughs> i'll bet it felt like sandpaper when it got here she's sweating now I mean, I do what you see myself in it yeah should have told me to brush my beard before <laughs> Man, that would be cool to be able to take it to some drive-ins now, yeah. you know. I, didn't, I just didn't want to before. I mean, I, I probably would have, but... I kept trying to get him to go. I tried, I, I tried, I tried to get him to go be, but... And stragglers left behind, you're going to see, but that is minor compared to what it had. Oh, yeah. yeah. The gloss is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah I know. It looks amazing. That's sick. Yep. Yeah, it definitely looks like a different color. Yeah, it does. It changes it. Yeah. So, yeah. Was that the higher it Definitely does. Appreciate it, man. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, by the time I did the hood and that whole side, half this top and there, I was like, I've already done a whole car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Today's cars. I mean, there's a lot of cars, but. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Yep. Rock and roll. All right. Take care. Thank you.